So this is going to be a kind of a, a quick quick overview of the common problems you'll have when you are trying to program or trying to send some code to an Arduino Nano for your projects. The same things will apply to other microcontrollers, but this is probably a good example to start with. So this is the, the Blink sketch. Um, I'm just going to try and program this. I've just opened up the Arduino IDE. I've opened up the Blink sketch. I'm literally just going to um, try and program this and it's going to give me a bunch of a bunch of errors because I've not set everything up properly but it's going to compile the sketch send it off and immediately I'm on the wrong well <laughs> two things uh, I'm on the wrong port and I've also got the wrong board set up so in your boards make sure that you've connected the uh, you've Assign the correct board, so it's Arduino Nano. I'm also plugged into, let's give it a second to catch up. I'm also plugged into the USB serial port, so this is running on my Mac. Some of the things will be on Windows. You just have to uh, find the correct COM port. Uh, so we're now uh, Arduino Nano, Mega 328P, USB serial. So now we can compile and send this code to the board. Okay. Now we still have another error because this is now saying it can't get sync. This is a, this is a common error you'll receive when it's just a serial communications problem. So in this particular instance, this Arduino Nano here uh, has the old bootloader, which needs to be, which the only difference is is the board rate. This is trying to send it one one five two hundred. What it needs to do, if we just change it to the old bootloader. Um, and we resend. It's going to send it at fifty-seven six hundred. Let me just reset this. Let's start that again. Okay, so nano early bootloader USB serial, and we will upload. The AVR dude was still running. So now we're at fifty-seven six hundred. It is now flashed, and it's blinking code is running. So that's the most common problem you'll see. Now, just whilst we've got this, this open here, because this will become apparent, this will be quite useful second in, in a moment. Um, the hex file that is compiled, so the firmware that is compiled from this particular piece of code is now stored in a, it's on my Mac, it's in a, a temp folder, blex.ino.hex. So if we, if I basically open up a command, a terminal, and I copy this folder here, var folders t7 blah 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 Arduino build 177259. If I copy this, Control C, and if I open up my terminal, uh, I'm currently just in my users directory. If I cd into that that folder, so it's got to be a forward slash var folders to build. Um, within here, if I do an ls on star dot hex. The, the hex file that it tried to upload is now in this folder. So what it basically means I can do is I can then, I can basically copy the entire command and resend a different hex file to this microcontroller without having to go through the whole rigmarole of programming it again. So if I just, if I scroll further up in here, uh, oh right, you might not have this on your output. What I've done is in the Arduino preferences, I have set the verbose output during compilation and upload on. Basically means I'm going to get a log of all the commands that are being run behind the scenes. And the, the command I'm interested in is the one here just before AVR Dude starts to, great name, starts to run. AVR Dude applications. If we just basically copy this entire row, just keep double click on it until you highlight everything. We'll copy that. I'll then open up a text editor. Let's just get this. And if we paste this in, you should see everything. How do I zoom in on this? View zoom in. Uh, okay, not the best format. Wrap to 
page. There we go. So this is the command that is ultimately run. And I can run this. I can just run this now. If I copy, it's in memory. If I go back to the terminal and I just paste this in and I, I hit enter, you'll see on the controller, it's running everything again that we just did. And it's just, it's putting it on. It's putting it onto the microcontroller. Um, so what we can, what we can basically do, if we were to put, it's probably easy to, oh, you can, you can tweak this or so basically everything under here and be the same on Windows, but again, different folder. So we're in var folders. This is the folder we're in. So all I'm going to do is I've, I've got another um, copy of another firmware which is the ASCII table example, um, iron.hex. All I'm going to do is just copy this into here. So if I do copy, and if you then just from here, I just copy and just drag and drop that in and then do a dot. So I'm copying that to here. When I then just up arrow to find my last commands, if I get the, the hex files that are now in this, this folder, I've got ASCII table.ino.hex. So what I can do I just copy this and then go to my text editor. I remove the old file. I then place this in. Don't worry about the formatting. It's all going to be fine. And then if I now just clear the screen to make it easier, if I paste this command in, I'm sending exactly the same thing in terms of the command. So it's, it's, it's running AVR dude. It's configuring it as the um, at mega 328p. It's Arduino, it's on my USB serial port, that's the board rate, and then it's basically telling it to flash this hex file. So now this is sending a completely different file to the microcontroller. And if I was to go back into Arduino IDE and look at the serial monitor, here we go. The ASCII text file is now running on this. So I didn't compile it and upload it. I just I compiled it earlier, saved the, saved the hex file. So if you had any additional firmware or hex file from somebody else that you wanted to add into your microcontroller, you don't need anything other than the Arduino IDE, just with a little bit of tweaking. Um, so let's have a think. That, that was... The, the main thing I wanted to cover off was just you can you can change this to whatever um, hex file you have as long as you've got a working AVR dude um, command that you're just literally going to be pasting in to your your terminal now if I just take this so I've got another Arduino Nano here which looks to be very similar but this is another cheap knockoff clone um, if I was to do exactly the same thing in fact what I'll do is I will just go back to the Arduino IDE because it's probably a bit easier to see the, the error messages if I take the blink code here so again there's no change it's an Arduino Nano old bootloader it's on the same serial port if I now program this onto here this should work but I'm going to get a very similar um, communications problem because I don't I don't know the actual reasons this if you get this STK 500 get sync attempt and nothing seems to work the only way I found to actually get around that is to bypass programming directly from the USB and let me just get the article here anyway I found that actually works is to the Nano using uh, an Arduino Uno. There is an option within the SDK that allows you to program with uh, ISP. Uh, it's basically using the, uh, I don't know technically what you call it, let's have a look through. Um, Miso, Mossy, it's basically, it's just, it uses the Uno to program the Nano. So there's a couple of things you have to do. First of all, you'll need a nano, and I suggest if you're doing any type of, you know, doing a bunch of programming to, to this stuff, 
you get yourself a nano. I've just got this one set up here in a box to, so I don't lose all the key components. This is just a box standard Algu version of the of the nano. The um, come with a box standard cable. It's a USB. Is it type B? Whatever those ones are, slightly bigger. Anyway, um, so I have this set up here. I'm going to plug this one in to my Mac. Right, so the first thing you have to do is actually load up something called the Arduino ISP program. A lot of the guides online don't mention this, but so th imagine this is a brand new Uno or it's got something else on it. You go to examples and under examples you have number 11 is the Arduino ISP. Just load up this program. Here we go. And obviously program this to the, to the Nano. You'll need to train, change this to the Uno. Make sure that your port is selected. You do Uno. Program the ISP. And this one should just work. I've got the obviously the verbose settings turned on. So again, it's doing a similar thing. It's going to be putting this into the hex file into another build folder within that temp folder that's been created. And it's flashed correctly. So this has now got the US, the ISP program. You don't need this anymore. You can close that. What we now want to do is program this um, using the ISP. So we don't need to change this. This, uh, this can stay on the, the Uno. I've seen some guides where it says connect back to the Nano. Uh, I've not needed to do that. Um, the DuPont headers that I have set up here between 10, 11 and 12, I've just put them into um, some IDC connectors you probably get with the Nano anyway. Just six of them. So on here I've got these already soldered in. You could just directly put these. It's probably easier if you do that. DuPont headers directly onto that. But when I'm just, depending on which nanos I'm which nanos I'm programming, these just going into here. So as per the instructables guide, the blue one, which is in pin 13, goes in the middle back. So I'll keep that holding to there. Just show you on the instructables. There we go. So 13 to the back, green one to 11 yellow one back right to 12 and then 10 is the reset pin then you just plug in the power five volts and ground to ground and uh, voltage in on the nano so that's how you set up this let's just get the five volts into voltage in there we go five volts and we'll get a ground connector going from one of the grounds doesn't matter which one you use into one of the grounds, doesn't matter which one you use, you use that one, and then reset goes into a reset, and then I'll just have to hold this because I'm not, this is not soldered in properly. So the Uno is set up, we're on the right port, so we've already compiled this, if we now just go to upload using Programmer, don't need to change anything else, as long as we have the US or the the Uno and the Nano set up as per the instructable schematic. Uh, hold this properly. This will now go through. Instead of getting an error message, we should get writing flash. There we go. Reading and verifying and done. Oops, I must have scrolled up. It's as simple as that. So this is now blinking as per what we are expecting it to do. Now, just as before we put on different firmwares using the other method, there's no reason to stop us doing exactly the same thing again. So what I'm gonna do now is just get the uh, the section from here where we're running our, our command, which was successful, control C that. We'll put this into text editor. So the only difference is instead of it being, um, what does a C command stand for? Not sure what that is in AVR, dude. But anyway, it was previously Arduino, Arduino 
programmer. This is now the SDK 500 V1, so it's the only difference. Everything else. Oh, and the board rate drops down to 19200 for the communications. So there you go. So what we can do, though, is we can just change the hex to any other hex file that we want to upload using the um, ISP programmer. So if we take the ASCII, the hex file from before, and just put this one in here, it this won't work initially because I believe every time, let's just go back into the, um, the terminal. Where are we now? We're in here, so we're in the build folder. If I, yeah, I think when it when it rebuilds, it deletes everything in the folder. So we're still in this, so we're still in seven two five nine. What I want to do is, uh, I can either scroll up uh, or I can just do control R and then search for my last copy command which was to copy the ASCII table hex file into here. So I'm going to do that again. So again, depending on where, where you're going to be running these commands from, um, just tweak as appropriate. So now when I list, the ASCII table is now back in here. If I now paste in, oops, a daisy, I did not grab the full command. So let's just grab the full command that we want to run. We're now going to control V, paste that into here. If I hold this programmer now, up, I'll do two things in parallel. I'll hit upload and I'll bring in the USB serial monitor. So we'll upload that. Uh, why is it not like that? What working directory am I in? 177.259, 177.259. Uh, it's in this particular folder. Carp open device. Hmm, resource busy. Maybe it's still open from the SDK. Not sure. Anyway, I'm just going to unplug it, plug it back in, and just run the same command. There we go. Turn it off, turn it on. Works every time. So we've now flashed this on. So if I just get the uh, is that going to work? Oh, I can, sorry, not going to work in the the. Uh, that's right. There's no serial. Let me just plug in a different one, just to show that it is running something different. So Blink was on there before. If I now unplug this from this, just lose that programmer. And if I now re-plug in this Nano and make sure we have everything set up in the Arduino IDE. Where is it? Here we go. Let's go to Tools, Serial Monitor. Oh, it's not running because I'm on the wrong board. Do -do -do -do. Arduino Nano. So again, just proving that something else has been loaded on here. Nano, get the port running. Go back to the serial monitor. And we should see the ASCII table is now running on here where previously we'd loaded Blink. So this is how you can upload different firmwares to Arduino Nanos even when it has a communication error. You will just need um, an Arduino Uno as your programmer, but that, that will resolve all your issues for any problems with the cheaper cloned nanos not programming via the IDE. So I hope that was useful and uh, catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.